Hi, welcome back. With the hardest part of the functional design, the legs, mostly out of the way, I've now been designing the rest of the body. Mechanically, everything's sound. However, I hit a bit of a wall in terms of artistic direction. Because, really, it's hard to give flair to something that's essentially intended as a general purpose development platform. All of the fascinating creatures in our world have form following function that function being homeostasis, or the general process of maintaining biological equilibrium, the aliveness of things. In essence, look attractive like a peacock to attract a mate, and appear cute and cuddly as an infant so adults will take care of you. So me playing God, I need some inspiration, an artificial evolutionary push of sorts, and something to guide me through the remainder of the design process. I decided that my escape plan would be to design a head for this robot first before the rest of the body, based around the purpose of partial autonomy and positive human interaction. Let's see how that went. Sometimes, a wonderful thing happens during design where I remember that it's not usually possible to phase one solid object through another. This was not one of those times. I needed to create a perfect disc out of acrylic, and after a lot of cursing and, well, almost buying a scroll saw, this hot cookie cutter method was the only thing that really prevailed. These are photodiodes. I do want this robot to eventually have some base level of phototropic functionality, or an attraction to light, and these will help provide that when the time comes. Bring to mind any movie where robots are featured as some type of sentient character. Short Circuit, Chappie, Mother, Wally, Big Hero 6, they all feature some sort of emotive device, commonly on the face, like eyebrows, ears, lips, that are imperative for allowing us to empathize with and understand them. We need and expect these responses as humans, and we'll even make them up to create emotions where there are none. So, for this robot, I arbitrarily chose these Pokemon-esque ears to be this robot's eye-catching, emotionally competent stimulus, each with two axes of movement, allowing them to perk up, lay flat, or flare out depending on the scenario. I made a little brass pin to serve as a pivot point for the robot's ears. And I took a toy industry approach to durability by designing in a good deal of mechanical slop to help prevent the thing from breaking itself if it encounters resistance at any point in time. There are a few components for this head that are salvaged from old RC aircraft and carts. These sub-micro-linear servos from a 4-axis model helicopter are a great example. The reason why big box corporate sales signs are yellow to create a sense of urgency, or why you should wear blue at a job interview to be perceived as more trustworthy, is because color is another massively important factor for communicating with our monkey brain subconsciously. So I added six neopixels to each ear, allowing for a massive color spectrum to be vividly displayed at all times, to take advantage of that mechanic. I was about to design a universal joint, 
when I remembered I still had these lying around from yet another beloved childhood toy. To keep strain to a minimum, each of the ears share power and ground between the servos and neopixels, and then need only two additional wires for data. For purposes of this demo and testing, I needed a way to puppeteer the head, so I gutted a 4-channel transmitter and simply connected each of the potentiometer outputs to their own analog read pin on the Arduino Mega that would be managing everything. Now, I realize that this wiring looks like a rat's nest of unicorn vomit, but fear not, because I have a fantastic and highly refined solution. Maybe I should employ a box over my head for a similar reason. Upon initial inspection, everything seemed fine and dandy. The servos were moving as expected, with minimal chatter, and there was a surprising lack of magic smoke. Can you feel the subtle foreshadowment? This peachy success story tragically died as soon as the NeoPixels were turned on. Oh dear. That is not correct. It was indeed not correct. Why? Fantastic question. Jeez, that's hot. Good observation, me. It was hot because that poor little cordless motor was oscillating back and forth faster than it would ever want to. I really wasn't sure what was going on. The script was simple. And in theory, the Mega had plenty of memory and processing chutzpah to deal with everything. The code stated that, after the motors were given their scaled microsecond values from the potentiometer inputs, those same values were just fed to the NeoPixels, one axis per primary color, to create a color sweep effect that moved with the motors. Not too complicated. Something was clearly wrong though, and my lack of knowledge prevented me from knowing what that was. Thankfully. It only took my googling this small issue to discover that I was not alone in my troubles, and that I could either code or buy my way out of them. The small issue was that I was asking my poor microcontroller to do two completely incompatible things. In order for the servos to function, the Arduino needs to send out very precise pulse width modulation signals. A variance of just one millisecond within them can be the difference between 0 and 180 degrees of movement for the servo. So the Arduino uses interrupts constantly as the rest of the code is running to make sure it maintains perfect timing. Interrupts are little bits of code that interrupt the main process in order to deal with something super critical, like making sure the servos are being spoken to correctly. On the other hand, the NeoPixels require a perfect 800 kilobit data stream between them and the Arduino in order for their one-wire control protocol to work. So, whenever they are being sent data, the NeoPixel library temporarily disables all interrupts. The result of this disagreement is that the NeoPixels sort of work, and the servos, well, act a little anxious to put it lightly. Thankfully, it just so happens that I had this Adafruit 16-channel 12-bit PWM driver lying around for some reason. I can offload onto it all of my servo control burdens while it communicates with the Arduino over I2C. This wiring, though substantially neater, still requires TLC in the form of a box to help my sanity. 
do this servo controller justice, I just needed to do a little prep work, following along with Adafruit's documentation. I first adjusted its internal clock frequency until it was as close as I could get it to the servo's expected 50Hz update frequency. Then, I modified the upper and lower pulse width ranges until the servo could reach its full 180 degree sweep without grinding gears or coming up short. And finally, I adjusted my upper and lower limits for the potentiometers so that they commanded the servos properly. And just like that, everything works. Pretty colors and all. The reason the movements are so non-linear and interpolated is because I'm using a simple motion smoothing function I wrote following a tutorial posted by James Bruton. Link in the description. This essentially causes the servos to slow their velocity as they reach their target destinations. The lighting will eventually follow pre-programmed sequences, but for now, as I mentioned, is simply directly driven by my stick inputs, and I think results in a nice little light show. I really like where this whole project seems to be going, and I think that the end result is at least going to be something pretty unique. Now that I have this head, it can serve as my stylistic theme for the rest of the body, which I now have to go finish designing. So remember to leave a like if you liked, and press the subscribe button, because I'm out of here. Cheers.